Did you know that already in 2023, Russia may be without a single combat ready tank? I did some research and found out that the Russians have lost almost all their combat ready tanks in Ukraine. And Russia's industry is no longer able to produce modern tanks in the necessary quantities. In this video, I will show you how Russia has squandered its tank potential and what will happen to Russia when it is left without a single tank. So, after the collapse of the Soviet Union, Russia inherited about 22,000 tanks, but it later became known that these numbers were over-exaggerated. A more accurate estimate before the war with Ukraine, Russia had 13,600 tanks in its fleet, which is also a lot. No other country had as many tanks as Russia. But it is interesting that 10,200 tanks remained in storage and only 3,400 tanks were in service in the Russian army. That is, only 3,400 tanks were ready for combat. Out of them, only 1,200 tanks were new and upgraded. For example, Russia had several hundred T-90 tanks and several hundred T-80 tanks. They were equipped with all modern equipment and were able to fight the most difficult battles in fields and in cities. When Russia invaded Ukraine, Putin threw the best and most modern tanks at capturing Kyiv. And in the first month of the war alone, the Ukrainians destroyed 530 of Russia's best tanks. With the help of Western Javelins and NLAW anti-tank systems, the Ukrainians destroyed entire columns of Russian tanks. Furthermore, during the fighting, Russia continued to lose about 10 to 12 tanks a day. And by November 7th, Russia had already lost 2,770 tanks in Ukraine. That means the Russians have only 630 combat ready tanks left. But this figure does not seem to be final either. During the counterattack, Ukraine took away about 400 more tanks as trophies from Russia. Therefore, Russia was left with approximately 230 combat ready tanks. Judging by the rate of losses in Ukraine, it is safe to say that next year, Russia risks being left without tanks at all if they do not make radical decisions in this direction. To make up for the losses, Russia has launched a large-scale program to reactivate old Soviet-era tanks. Yes, we have not forgotten that the Russians have another 10,200 preserved tanks, but there are also a lot of problems with them. All these tanks can be conditionally divided into three groups. Recently, it turned out that almost half of these tanks are not suitable for restoration at all and are nothing more than scrap metal. They were stored for decades in so-called tank graveyards without proper care. The fact is that preserving tanks requires careful maintenance and a lot of money should be allocated for this. The engine and gearbox of the tank are filled with oil. The electronic units and control systems are removed and kept in a special protected vault. And the armored hull and track chassis are covered with a special coating against rust, which has to be changed at least every five to seven years. It turns out that Russian corruption was firmly entrenched in the Russian army and all of these processes were not followed. The electronics from the tanks have been stolen from the warehouses. The engines of the tanks have no oil, and the money allocated for this purpose has also been stolen by military officials. These tanks can be clearly seen on satellite images. They are often lying without turrets in the rain and snow, completely covered with rust. It would probably be easier to build a new tank than to restore this scrap metal. The other half of these tanks can be divided into two more parts. The first part is restorable, but requires serious repair. The other group can be quickly reactivated, but there are very few such tanks. The Russian tank industry is already working in three shifts in order to have 800 tanks in service by the end of 2022. Russian tanks simply do not have enough components. Russia does not have any modern spare parts, and it is not possible to import them because of the sanctions. And Russia can hardly produce old components because most of the enterprises from the Soviet period have long ceased to exist. On the Ukrainian front, older T-62 machines began to be seen more and more often. They do not have proper dynamic protection. They lack basic equipment, no thermal imaging cameras, sights and night vision devices, and often no communications equipment. These tanks often stall in the middle of the battlefield and break down. In other words, it's just an iron armored cart and nothing more. 
Already at this stage, it is safe to say that Russia has lost almost all of its modern tanks. Perhaps some number of them were kept for parades in Moscow, but on the battlefield, they have not been seen for a very long time. The irony is that Russia has always been considered the great tank power with the most tanks. Russia's concept of war was that they relied heavily on ground forces. Russia never gave much importance to the Navy as Britain and the United States did. They have always prepared for combat on land, and therefore, tanks have always been the mainstay of their fighting power. But now, Russia actually risks being left without tanks. The Ukrainian army is grinding down Russia's entire military potential, everything that Western Europe feared for many years during the Cold War. Russia has repeatedly threatened Europe that its tanks could easily reach the English Channel. And if it were not for Russian nuclear weapons, NATO countries could now easily enter Russia and take possession of the country without much trouble. The Russians have begun taking tanks from Belarus. According to Ukrainian intelligence, Belarus has already handed over more than 130 of its best tanks to Russia, as well as components. There are now seven plants in Russia which produce spare parts for tanks, but this is only enough to repair old tanks. The production of new tanks in Russia is very limited. No more than 60 tanks a year can be produced by the largest tank plant in Russia, Uralvagonzavod, which is not even enough for one month of military operations against the Ukrainian army. There is another exclusively Russian reason for such a catastrophic situation of the Russian army. And this is the all-consuming corruption. Everyone in Russia, from Vladimir Putin to the rank-and-file soldier, steals. Only Putin steals billions and soldiers steal everything they can carry. There are even known cases where Russian soldiers, while in Ukraine, removed equipment from their tanks themselves and exchanged it for food and alcohol. A telling story demonstrating the level of corruption in the Russian army happened in 2020. The famous Russian II-80, so-called Doomsday Plane, was undergoing a scheduled repair at one of the military enterprises. During repairs, all valuable electronic equipment worth millions of dollars was stolen from it and taken away in an unknown direction. The culprits were never found, which makes it clear that local officials and the military were behind the theft. This aircraft is capable of remaining in the air for long periods of time, being refueled and serviced without landing. In the event of a nuclear war, the Russian leadership, in theory, could escape and retain control of the country aboard this plane. This is a top secret military development of national importance, and even with it, they could steal dozens of electronic units. So if Russia is left without tanks, it can easily be conquered by anyone, but most likely it will be China. China is waiting for Russia to weaken and squander all of its military potential and at the right moment, it will bring in its army of millions to take some land from Russia for the living space of its large population. 